Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And I realize this picture is an older picture, but my gosh, I tell you what, it's like worth a thousand words, right? Doesn't seem like the faces have really changed. And I'm sure uh, that uh, Mr. Obama is still sitting at the table, but <laughs> uh, and Biden holding his head down as usual, right? Here we go. Listen, we got a lot of things going on. Uh, the situation in Ukraine is getting much worse. And the Joint Chiefs have been meeting. They have been running war games. Uh, they're very much concerned about a possible nuclear war coming to the United States. Now, I mentioned to you recently how, though, we have been helping to push uh, Russia into a scenario where they would use nukes against us, pretty much forcing Putin's hand where he has not much other choice or alternative. That's because the world uh, oligarch leaders out there want to bring about the one world government, and they're not going to stop until they get that. Um, one thing, though, that has also made the situation much worse than uh, normal is that China recently did a purchase. Now, this is a September 24th, 2013 uh, deal, as I'm just using this as a uh, a visual aid there, but China did a land purchase inside of Ukraine, not just for farmland, but it was a big swath of land that also included a factory that builds helicopter engines. This was a $5 billion deal. All right, five, I repeat it, a $5 billion deal. Well, just so happens uh, that uh, China uh, was going to get this property, and then NATO steps in and says, no way, you're not doing the deal. It is a strategic location, the building of the uh, helicopter engine factory there, you got to keep that land. Well, so Ukraine backs out of the deal, but keeps the money. Well, that's because they had already divvied it out against, uh, amongst their little uh, politicians and oligarchs that they have there in Ukraine. Uh, and so now China is furious over the fact that Ukraine did it and the fact that they would not return the money. Of course, China could have probably lived with it if they'd have gotten their money back. But, you know, five billion cash kind of disappears pretty quick in Ukraine. I can tell you that. That's for sure. So anyway, what has China done? China now has turned to Russia. And although their relationship is a bit untrusting because of the two superpowers uh, bordering one another, they have turned to Russia. They want to pay Ukraine back for stealing their money, and they have said to Russia, what do you want done? We will do it. That's really what it comes down to. So now China may very well enter into this whole combat uh, war scenario here going on in Ukraine. And uh, so it's really a bad situation right now. And uh, also, too, another thing, Poland uh, is needing more land for survival for agriculture. So now Poland is talking about taking half of Ukraine for themselves and taking and moving their own borders. Imagine that. Well, just to make matters even crazier than that, we know too that NATO has been moving massive amounts of equipment into uh, Poland. Uh, that particular uh, video right here, let me just kind of Turn the volume down on that a little bit. But uh, we had moved a tremendous amount of equipment into uh, Poland. And by the way, as I mentioned to you, a bordering country that struck deep inside of Russia where we had moved our assets to, I was thinking it was uh, on the southern border of Ukraine, but ends up being it actually came from the western border of Ukraine. That's how the strikes were made against Russia. In fact, it just goes to show how much uh, more reach had to be made because the the uh, the targets had to cross all the way across Ukraine, deep inside, some 500 miles deep inside of uh, Russia to hit their targets there. Something Ukraine does not have technology for. Something that Ukraine, uh, they don't have technology, they don't have the missiles that can go that far, but we definitely have that capability and that capacity. Um, let's see, also too, like I said, they've been running the war games and stuff, trying to figure out the scenarios of what's going to happen, <clears throat> and, um, and oh, by the way, too, I was also told that Poland will become the fifth largest military power in the world as a result of all 
the hardware. The United States and NATO has been pumping into this country, preparing them for wars and battles that are upcoming. Uh, and again, going back to the issue of that we are going to be struck here, or at least that there is a fear that we're going to be struck here with the, with the brass there at the Joint Chiefs of Staff, uh, you got to keep in mind that uh, there are, I've been told there are 15 new cities that are supposed to be targets of that attack. And out of those 15 cities there, I do know that Orlando, Florida is one. Washington, D.C. is another one. Uh, I know that Atlanta, Georgia would be one. That's three right there. Uh, you'd have New York City, which would be four. Uh, Los Angeles is five. You would have uh, St. Louis, Missouri, which is six. Uh, those are pretty much uh, the six that I am aware of that would be struck there. So you still have nine more cities that are on the target uh, that are anticipated to actually be struck by uh, Russian forces in the event that an attack actually begins. The question then came up as to when would this happen. Uh, winter is always a favorable month, but I know that the, the, uh, the analysts that I spoke with said that uh, although it could be this winter, they highly doubt it. They feel like that it would they would wait until next winter before striking. That this uh, winter here is more for the what they call the shock factor uh, of the shortages and things of that nature. There, they're going to allow that just to be the shock uh, factor. That uh, the nuclear war itself would wait until the following winter. Uh, I can tell you right now, time passes awfully quick, very rapidly, and that's exactly the way things will go. Uh, also, too, just want to remind you, Patreon, uh, Israeli News Live, we just loaded up a new video there, Bernice King. Will she be president? That's the question we are asking. Uh, we have heard from Washington that she is being groomed to be president of the United States. Now, they do not believe that she will make it in this next term, but they do believe that she may very well run. They don't have any really good candidates on the Democratic side of things there, so they are trying to groom her. They just don't think they can get her ready quick enough uh, to become president this round here, but they feel confident that they can have her in 2028. So they are preparing uh, Bernice King to be president of the United States. Stacey Abrams fell by the wayside. Anyway, I go into that in this video right here on our Patreon channel there. Also, what's coming? Interesting video. I have another one I'm, I'm going to be trying to do here uh, probably tomorrow morning before I can do the next one on Patreon, but uh, we're going to be getting into some more of the aspects of things that Mike from around the world talked about. These were some of the things that I highlighted there uh, in, in a letter that I had. So uh, I'll have to share that with you. Uh, so anyway, we're going to be getting into the shock waves, uh, Iran, North Korea, the ICBMs that they have. Uh, and it is true, North Korea and Iran do have ICBMs that are hypersonic. Uh, Russia has is starting to really go completely off the deep end, supplying its neighbors with supersonic, hypersonic weapons. And uh, so we'll be getting into that over here on our Patreon channel with you guys as well. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're listening to Israeli News Live. Thank you for listening and blessings to you.